And it looks like spawning here down in the bottom right-hand corner from Team Evil Geniuses, one of the two EG players here today, it is alive. And hanging out all the way up or yonder, also from Team Evil Geniuses, hoping to make it out of his group today, not in fourth or third place, it will be the Muslim. You know, it's interesting. De Muslim, he's he's been notorious for being like this. He uh, he kind of tries to relax like crazy, and whenever he relaxes before a huge tournament, rather than playing and training and always grinding, he ends up doing fantastically well throughout oh, that yeah. tournament. I mean, true words never spoken. Relaxation, honestly, so much more important than getting yourself hyped up. Man, you need to get pumped down to play in tournaments like this. <laughs> The Muslim starting off uh, actually going for the ultra-fast gas. I do like this build. Looks like, uh, given what I've seen from him playing on the good old ladder on his stream, mm -hmm. also given what we've seen out of players who do go gas first, it's almost certainly going to be ultra-fast Banshee. Yeah, this is something that we've seen ever since the Wings of Liberty days. But along with this, you know, Cloak comes out so much faster because it only costs 100 gas. So you can oh, tack yeah. on a second refinery a lot later. That means prioritize getting your economy rolling, getting your minerals out, and then getting that super fast expansion rather than, you know, getting the gas and only prioritizing in tech, which is what we saw in Wings of Liberty. Oh, yeah. And I mean, the, the gas, obviously the biggest restricting factor, but it even frees up that extra 100 minerals. That's that means constant marine yeah. production. You don't have to be doing it in very much so an all-in-ish fashion. So we see the Muslim, boom, getting the marine out. And where's the factory? Where's the factory? There it is, throwing down. Looks like the Muslim wanted to try to hide his plans a little bit, but Alive's being pretty dang tenacious with that SCV, oh, Andre. Yeah. And that's good, because if he didn't see the factory over here, he would probably assume that it's somewhere on the map and, of course, scout for different proxies. Mm -hmm. He sees it's over there, doesn't have to worry. He's just gauging his opponent's range and seeing exactly what he can do. Alive is reacting by getting a reactor right oh, away. interesting. Well, yeah, this is kind of weird because normally when you see this happen, you have to think, well, there can be early pressure that happened at the beginning stage. Yes, it's very rare, but... There could be uh, an immediate Hellion out and then Marines just traversing across the map, trying to poke out a little bit. Instead, he's focusing on getting that reactor super fast in order for him to get units super fast, saying, yeah, okay, yeah. you will not attack me in this beginning phase. And by the same token, we see Alive getting a second gas geyser. This indicates that he's just going to answer the Muslim's build with an extremely fast starport of his own. Looks like it's going to be Raven, and it's exactly what you were saying before the game, Andre. We're going to see insta counter to that. I mean... <laughs> Hell, even I was saying, well, well yeah, it looks like everyone's going to go for a fast Banshee here. Do you really think that's correct, though? I mean, yes, you say it's a counter it's a counter against Cloak Banshees, but he doesn't know for sure if that second refiner mm -hmm. is down. So this can be Cloakless, Cloakless Banshee. You could be get a Raven, which is meant to really mess up that upgrade, and all of a sudden you're up against a faster expansion. Uh, more units that are out. Still the same amount of pressure that you would face against a Cloak Banshee but all of a sudden you're a lot more inefficient. I think, I, think it's, I think it's pretty good to go for the Raven in this circumstance, just due to the fact that that Seeker missile is now so cheap. Great way to break through tank lines. Very true. Alive, throwing down his command center. He is beating the Muslim to it. I love this adjustment, getting the single Widow Mind up. This is great, not only for dealing with Banshee Harass at you, but also for containing a player who tries to expand too fast. As you said in the very beginning stage, you can go a lot of different options. We've seen a lot of bio play, we've seen a lot of mech play on Aklon Waste, and very clear plans for both these players. And I like about the beginning stage how it's very difficult to tell what your opponents are doing. Mm -hmm. And so far, I, th I think both players are ready and capable of switching to bio or to mech as we move on to the mid game stage. I think they're really going to gauge their opponents a little bit later on to see what is probably best against their opponent? Oh, huh. You know, I'm looking at the Muslim's vision. He hasn't scouted at all. His first scout yep. this game is the Banshee. And it's kind of like what you were saying, can come back to bite the Muslim. He's done no scouting, which essentially means he is just banking on his build. And he's going for the defense to back it up. He's going for a Raven as well. He's kind of doing this all-around defense. It's almost like a very tentative Banshee harass. Here we go. He's going to pop in here, take out the first SCV, I'm sure. Oh, oh and it looks like he tries to get fire. some shots off at the mine, but of course, the Muslim knows exactly how this harass is supposed to go. He is cool. just going to harass. Yes. Cloak has finished. 
So he could have easily, well, actually it finished before him, but he could have canceled directly before this. Now he's going to give a little chase. The Banshee should be able to outrun the Raven, so he should be fine all the way at the end. In the back, you can see the Muslim's command center is just now finishing, and he switched over. He's getting siege tanks, so we could very well see. Well, it's still, it's still difficult to say um, because we didn't see a scout coming out from Demuslim. Wow, that's a very quick third CC. Because we didn't see a, a scout coming out from Demuslim, he was still yeah, defending yeah. against one base all in, so you need to get that siege tank out. That's what we were talking about in the very beginning. Demuslim oh, yeah, is yeah. a comprehensive player. He loves to defend against everything if he doesn't know what he's up against. Oh, loves the well-rounded defense. And look at this. Oh, the Raven from Demuslim picks off the mine right now. Units lost tab has shown that only a mine has been lost thus far, and it is going to be a lives mine. I think that Demuslim's play is brilliant for this map specifically. I mean, as much as, you know, I'd want to say something like, ah, he's trying to focus too much on the defensive side of things. He is just saying, all right, cool, it's Akalon Wastes. And Easy three base play. Exactly. It makes a lot of sense, too, to get these siege tanks. All of a sudden, you've established yourself as a potentially one base pusher, but you're very defensive. Very, very defensive. No early game direct pushes up this center are going to work theoretically, right? So mm -hmm. out of that, mm -hmm. you say, okay, well, I'll take advantage of that, knowing that they can't attack me. They're probably not going to mount an attack. Let's get that third command center down. It's not actually theoretically greedy whatsoever. It's actually quite safe. Yeah, and we already see three barracks going down. The Muslim's doing a good job tucking his defense away, hiding that back. Both players are going biotank. Oh, yes! Yes, if you weren't observing right now, Andre, I would high-five you because seriously, I love Biotank versus Biotank on this map. I mean, the positioning is so weird. You have this big slit in the middle, so there's no real clear hold this choke, and then you're good. There's a ton of movement. I don't think the Muslim's going to be able to move that orbital command for a while, and I'm actually even questioning, do you think he should go for the more central expo or for the left expo? Same question to Alive. I think you should always go for the left expo on this map. And yes, there's a really nice spot for Alive to sort of attack and stage a lot of attacks. Mm -hmm. But if you do um, take this middle right expo, what you do is open yourself up to a lot of drop play, which is a lot harder to defend if you are being the one taking expansions a lot faster. And as well, uh, you're, you have to defend two main locations. And it, because you have to defend this center middle, it yeah, opens you yeah. up even more. So if you take the mid-left position, all of a sudden you just defend this one really easy defend area. You can just deny them from going all the way into the third base, and then you defend against regular expansions. It just depends if Alive is doing two base all-ins. But yeah, I think theoretically yeah. it's more correct to defend against, or to take the mid-left. And that's why I think Alive has planted his widow mine over there rather than going into this top middle. But he's... The Muslims choosing the top middle. Yeah, I mean, it looks like both players are going for their uh, more central expansion, which I think essentially declares that they are both going to be playing a little more defensively minded, playing a little more cautious, because as you say, I mean, look, for instance, at the back of Alive's expansion area. That is so huge, the ability to drop Alive's third and his main and how far that distance is, is away on ground. So Alive looks like he says the best defense is a good offense. He's beginning to move out. Alive is ahead on expansions, is ahead on supply. I mean is ahead in every way. What? How did he get 29 Marines so fast? Jeez, that early extractor has been doing some work, Andre. I mean, the SCV count is pretty similar, so it mm -hmm. really makes you kind of think. 113 supply to 126. Alive, going to bust down these rocks over here. Does the Muslim see them? Yes, he does. So he will go ahead and reposition, but you're going to have this constant back and forth. Uh-oh. And Alive doesn't actually have to do damage here. He can just be a threat oh. here. Alive's doing some harassment with this Raven at the natural expansion. A really cute, a really annoying play, but I don't think this is actually going to get that much benefit. It's going to distract a couple of Marines for a brief period of time, but now all of a sudden he's going to have no detection for that Cloak Banshee, which still is significant, even in the late game. That's absolutely true. Marks of good players. You see those Banshees being used all over the place. Marines now going into the third base. And he will be able to stop mining for quite a long time. Uh, overall, okay defense from the Muslim, but of course he is losing out just because he's suffering a couple of losses here and there. Really, really nicely done by Alive. He's just going to back up, recombine all of his army, and then push out yet again. Oh, he does wow. not want to be caught out in the middle of the field. All of a sudden, the Muslim is surrounding all of his units. I mean, Alive's mechanics are absurd. He's killed off only eight workers, but you see in the worker differential, 57 to 70, because in the midst of all that, Alive didn't miss a single worker cycle and Demuslim missed a few of his own. So we're starting to see that edge climb ahead. Alive is on the aggression. 
De Muslim's on the defensive. De Muslim behind on upgrades, behind on marine counts. Doesn't even have his armory down yet. De Muslim is trying to go toe to toe with Alive, but as Alive begins to take up more sections of the map, he's going to be able to get more bases up. He's going to be able to throw down more. Ooh, a second factory is also going down. It looks like the engagement might begin to slowly unfold. This is going to be difficult for De Muslim because after he kind of defends this position, where does he really have to go? Oh, Ugh. stimming up, taking a lot of damage right away, and it's going to actually expose a lot of his third base. Now all of a sudden, De Muslim has to go back. It's so difficult. De Muslim cannot be aggressive because he has to get rid of this whole army. He's looking uh -oh. for a big trade. This might this be is, it. This is a great engagement angle for De Muslim. I mean, Alive is, using, is losing bucket loads of Marines. These two Vikings at the front doing some work on the medevacs, but Alive is tucked away into a corner where he's actually trapped quite badly. Trying to rush up, trying to get some uh, value out of this by picking off. Oh! oh! The Muslim missed a big opportunity to pick off some of those key medevacs. And for now, Alive is still going to maintain his position. He still has the Marine count, believe it or not, Day 9, as uh, he's wow. up 51 to 43. That means his macro is really churning out so much stuff. This is going to help out as the Muslim, you, you would think he's having good cost-efficient trades, but he's in fact not. He's not able to keep up in the macro area. So all of a sudden, the Muslim's biggest strength is, all, uh, is alive strength at this point. So the Muslim's doing quite a risky play. He's trying to work oh. around. Oh, the Muslim catches it at the perfect time. He's going to rush up. How many tanks will he get? He's going to clean up this front line. Yeah. He's going to clean up the back line. The Muslim gets perfect. a huge positional advantage as he now has eight tanks. He is lower on Marines. It's 61 to 40. So this means that Alive has to kick into drop mode. That's the only way to really leverage those Marines in a guaranteed way. And on top of that, it's so intelligent because it slows down the push. The Muslim wants to take more space. Space is going to help out so much. That's the way you're able to do damage and have options. But now, once he's going to do this counterattack with all these medifacts, it's going to limit the amount of space because these units are going to back up. It gives the momentum and tempo to Alive. He's going to push in and try oh, to take no. as much position as possible. Here it comes. Third base is under attack. Third base under attack. We see a drop from the Muslim at the far right side as well, just trying to pick things off with that Raven, but it is nothing compared to this Marine drop that's happening at the top side. Another Marine drop trying to move into the back of the Muslim's natural expansion. It looks like it will get picked off. Only a single Marine man just to pop out of that. The third base drop lifts up. Like you say, Andre, the point of this is not to deal damage. It is to delay, delay, delay. That's right. While he gets up that siege tank count, although alive, he hasn't been dealing with these auto turrets nearly as well as the Muslim has. And it's kind of funny that Alive has just sat back. He really doesn't need to sit back in this position. He needs to uh, to push forward. Position is everything in TVT. You must claim position. It's actually a lot of times more valuable than material. Oh, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, you get your siege tanks into a good position. Your enemy Marines walk into that position. That's oh, right. my God, it feels so good. It's like way better than a Thai massage, just seeing Marines run into tank lines. How dare you? <laughs> you know, I'm Thai. I give you massages all the time. Would you say that's better? I didn't realize that was a Thai massage going on literally. <laughs> and there's the Muslim taking out the mine at his fourth base as Alive steps forward, but the Muslim does have the defensive position. He needs to siege oh. up. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. The Muslim does not siege up in time. He's going to lose a ton of tanks. This is an absolutely spectacular engagement for Alive. He is going to rip down these lines. Oh, the Muslim one second behind on the siege up and is going to completely abandon his edge. He even had, I would say, the money composition for Siege Tanks. He had so many that he didn't have to worry if he only grouped up every single one of these units. You can see three Siege Tanks just out in the middle of nowhere, not uh, not contributing at all to that last engagement. Marine's going to bolt over to the fourth base over in the mid-left-hand position. Uh, you know, it's really, really a shame, I think, because I felt like the Muslim did have the capabilities of pushing out, really getting oh, good man. engagement. Alive had so many Marines, and when you have a lot of tanks, obviously you have a nice counter when you want a, a straight-up confrontation. But how it stands, Alive was able to get a really, really nice engagement from that oh, take a gigantic yeah. advantage. And Alive's just chilling, waiting for 3-3. Three, three. Boom, right. it is now done. Almost every single engagement, Alive has actually had better upgrades, which is very impressive that he's able to so consistently time that. Ugh, workers try to transfer. A couple of them eat it in the face. Another drop from Alive, and I think the Muslim's doing what he needs to do. That's staying right. still, staying calm, trying to defend himself properly, and just remax, really. Now, how would you say the Muslim actually, uh, well, maybe he won't even get to that as Alive pushes Ooh. over to the third base. There's not enough siege. Uh, well, oh, maybe there where's are. the scan? Where's the scan? We see a lot of tanks here. Alive decides to engage. Look at all those body parts flying away from both sides. Uh. It's just... 
a meat grinder there, and Alive gets the advantageous position. He oh, pushes up. He's going to try to pick off the third command center. De Muslim lifts, retreats, and repairs. But as you say, Andre, position is more important than material, and this is a great position for Alive. Yeah. He has caused De Muslim to lift. De Muslim trying to do these little pushes with this um, single Raven on the right side, and other than that, De Muslim has made no cross map progress. It's impossible for him to, I feel. I mean, it's it's very, very difficult being behind a material and position at the same time. It's like, well, Ugh. you will never be able to mount an offensive stance in that position. Now, this entire region is open. That means Alive has free reign against this fourth base, oh, which is no. his freshest oh, mining base. Oh, God. The Muslim's trying to unload everything from his medevac. He loses all but a single one. And now we see Alive swinging over to that death position that you were referring to earlier while dropping the third. I mean, there's just simultaneous action happening all over the map, and it is all Alive's initiatives. Yep. And still no material advantage for the Muslim to really counter this. So the real question is, how is he going to go about this? I love this continuation drop play. This is the one way to, to really oh, thwart this position gruesome. from a stalemate, because obviously you can do a lot of denying, but these siege tanks on the low ground are unable to be shot at by the Muslim. He's going to rain down fire onto this fourth base. It's going to be denied. I mean, the lives bouncing left and right, left and right. Denying one expo, denying the other. The Muslim is just losing the war of attrition. I mean, right now, mm -hmm. Alive hasn't done any additional expanding, but he is still getting a gigantic economic lead by picking off so many, so many SCVs. I mean, right now, 30 have been killed off. It's 74 to 56. The unit's lost tab tells a lot of the story as we see the Muslim slowly slipping away. And now with these tanks sieged up, I mean, Alive, does he also have a tank lead? Jeez, 16 to 11. He's just going to sit and wait. And here's the big push. That's right. Tanks are going to be taken out from the high ground. Tanks are moving forward from Alive. He is still basically maxed. The Muslim trying to do a counter drop on top of all these siege tanks. But there's just way too much stuff here. Stim Marines are going to thwart that. GG gets...